worthy of note is one of the interesting aspects of God's dealings with mankind, that every time he does so, he has to stoop. In fact, the Hebrew word for bless, barak, means to kneel down. The concrete or extended meaning of the word is to do or to give something of value to another. In creation, then, this wonderful, glorious, divine being knelt down, put his divine hands in the clay, and molded a body. It was the most perfect piece of molding that has ever been seen, much greater than anything the greatest artist living on this earth could ever produce. But it was just lifeless. It was just clay. Then this divine being stooped further and put his divine lips against the lips of clay. He put his divine nostrils against the nostrils of clay. And the scripture says, the Lord breathed into the nostrils the breath of life. The word breathe should be understood with emphasis because the Hebrew word is a powerfully descriptive word. In the vivid Hebrew language, the sound of the words is linked to the action they describe. When it says, he breathed, in Hebrew it says, napach. Phonetically, the P sound in that word is plosive. A plosive letter is a letter that requires an explosion to make it. English has only one good plosive letter which is P. If you say the word pepper, for instance, you will see that each P is a little explosion. So when God breathed into man, there was first an explosion and then a long outgoing breath. In other words, God did not just breathe languidly into the body of clay. He breathed himself into it. He imparted himself Through that breath, God came in, and the piece of clay was marvelously, miraculously transformed into a living human body. It became a human person with all the faculties that you and I enjoy. Because of our origin, we have an eternal divine destiny. That light in us cannot die. It is the light of God. This is a solemn thought for all of us because it means we will never cease to exist. We have therefore only two alternatives. We can exist in the presence of God or we can exist in eternal banishment from the presence of God. Each one of us is going to experience one or the other of those choices. We are eternal for better or for worse. The materials of our beginning may have been humble, but we were formed and molded by the hand of God, awesomely and wonderfully made, and then inbreathed by the very breath, the Holy Spirit of God. If we do not fully realize the implications of this truth, we will never find fulfillment. If we do not realize how inexpressibly valuable we are to God, granted, we have mistreated this divine workmanship. We have failed to appreciate it. We have squandered God's amazing creation in unrighteous living, in foolish enjoyments, and in sinful pleasures. But we are still made in the likeness and image of God and destined to be seated with Christ on God's throne of mercy in heaven.